perfect. What's happening everybody? Uh, we're back with another video working on the Jeep SRT today. Uh, it's gonna be another install video for the sound system that we're doing. And today we are going to be installing the amplifier, which I will show you that real quick. I got it right here. Don't mind all the arts and crafts stuff I got going on here. Although some of it's not bad looking. Just been super bored and I've been watching people on TikTok make videos of this stuff and they're like, oh, it's super hard. So I did this literally to prove a point that it's super easy. Not the point. Anyways, so this is why we're here. Bam. Uh, we'll be installing this amplifier today in the Jeep. So let me get this. Man, I have so much crap in here. That's empty. Okay. Uh, go ahead and pull this bad boy out. We got our base knob, the wiring for it. Comes with some wrenches. And obviously the manual or the power booklet, whatever you want to call it, tells you everything about all the amps that they have, all the ratings and blah, 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 how to hook it up, how to adjust it, all that kind of stuff. So that's awesome. Um, and here, Maybe, okay. We have our base knob, which as you can see the back of it has the same aux cable that that will plug into, and then the other end will plug into the amp. And Allen wrenches, I don't really need that anymore. All right, let's get this puppy cracked open. Don't eat those. Just throwing that out there. All right, so you can see that this has, this is for the Allen wrenches on the top, which is what we got. But this has some monster connectors for our wiring, which is perfect. Our speaker wires. On the other side, we have RCA inputs, gains, low pass frequency, subsonic the base equalizer, power protect, and this is where the remote plugs in that other aux cable. So, this is a 2000 watt RMS amp that is not 2000 watts max, depending on how you wire it. Well, let me see if it's got it in here. Uh, just shows you how it's wired, okay. We'll go here, digital mono block specifications, which is what we have. We're gonna be running it at one ohm. The RP2000 is, as you can see, I hope, 2000 watts times one ohm. That is RMS power. Uh, so we're not gonna be running it at its full capacity, uh, but we'll be running it at about 16, 1700 watts RMS. So it'll be just below it. I just wanted something that was powerful enough to push the subwoofers that I bought, uh, which are currently sitting at my neighbor's house because he's building the box. So I wanted to make sure that he had the subwoofer so he could measure the box correctly uh, to get them installed so that they're a nice snug fit. Uh, I don't want any gap between the actual box and the subwoofer basket, anything like that. So they're at his house so he can use it for measurements. But I want to at least get this installed uh, along with the rest of the wiring. So I'm going to turn the Jeep around and then back it up so that the trunk is facing the garage. It just makes things a little easier. So let's do that. Obviously, I had to rev it, obviously. Okay, so here's what we got going right now. 
nothing in the trunk. As you can see, empty. What we're going to do is I am actually going to take this mat out and this is not going to stay back here anymore. Um, just because the subwoofer box is going to be tight. So I don't want stuff on the sides getting, you know, bent or crammed into the subwoofer box, anything like that. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do a little bit of cleaning back here because as you can see, it's kind of dirty. Um, I actually do not have this subwoofer installed. Uh, you can see right through it where the, the hole is, where the enclosure sits. So I did remove that. I am gonna have to take out the car seats uh, and then we'll get to it. All right, we have the car seats removed and I know it's messy back here. I have a three-year-old son that loves to kick the back of my seat. And don't worry, he gets yelled at every time he does it. And thankfully he's doing it less and less now, so he's starting to listen, yay. Anyway, so, fold these seats down. Um, I was debating whether or not I should go through the entire process of wiring this, just because if there's other people that want to do it, it's not so scary and you can kind of get a run through. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know how I'm going to do it with this video, but this part, it sits right here. Literally, you just pull it up. It just snaps. It. It's got some clips that holds it in. That's it. That part's done. Nice, easy start anyways. When I, when I originally put the system in last year, uh, because I had not seen any videos on it, any of that, it literally took me like seven hours to do it. So now that I've done this a few times in my own car, hopefully it doesn't take that long anymore. Anyway, but what you're gonna wanna do to access this panel, well, we'll get to that actually. So, nice thing about the Jeeps, battery is under the passenger side seat. Unfortunately, if you need to change the battery, you have to remove the seat. Uh, or if you want to hook up the sound system, I mean, technically, you move the seat back all the way and you pop this up, you have access to the battery. This is kind of hard to pop up. Anyway, but you have access to the battery or if you move it all the way forward, the positive is on the front, the negative terminal is on the back. So depending on which one you need to access, you can move the seat. I found it easier just to pop these caps off unbolt it, unbolt it from the back, take the seat out, gave me more room to work with uh, so that I could, I did install an aftermarket battery terminal um, just because it's got thicker wire on it, stuff like that. It can, it can hold a thicker gauge wire. This, you obviously just pop up and pull out. Everybody with a Jeep knows how to do that. Set this down. Over here. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, so then, to get to everything else, pop the spare out, all these pieces, and this plastic piece, you need to pop this off first, which there are bolts under here, under each one of these that you pop up. You unbolt both of these, and then this piece kind of has a couple clips in it. You just pull this piece out. Uh, same with those, the, where the little hook is right there. Don't anchor your car seat to it, people. Just so you know, that's what you use the back of the seats for. But this also has uh, bolts on either side. You remove those. You're gonna need two sockets, one for the top, one for the bottom, more than likely, because mine were kind of rusted and stuck. So, uh, but you will need that to unbolt those. You pop those up. And then this whole plastic piece uh, just pops out and you can take the whole thing out which you need to do to get this side panel off to gain access to your factory subwoofer uh, and if you don't have a line output converter to convert power from your subwoofer to the amplifier uh, you're gonna need to do that to take this out and you're gonna need I draw I, I'm drawing power from this uh, plug-in right here the car charger port whatever I don't know why they have one in the trunk but it worked that's what I'm using for the power for my line, line output converter. But let me show you guys this monstrous cable I got running back here. So this is the power wire I have coming from my battery. This is Rockford Fosgate wiring. 
I wanted to make sure I gave myself enough of it, so I cut myself a nice long whip, and I still have some extra down there just in case. And then this is my ground wire, which I have sanded and bolted to the seat, which I might re-sand and re-bolt again, just to be on the safe side. Uh, man, I really gave myself a ton of wire. Holy cow. I really don't need that much wire, let's be honest. That's quite a bit. Anyway, uh, then the RCAs and everything are run back here. That does not need to run to the front of the vehicle because I have the line out, bleh, the line output converter back here. The uh, RCAs as well as the remote wire going to the amp are all run back here. Um, so yeah, so let's get to it. All right, so I have the GoPro literally mounted in front of my face on my hat so you guys can see everything that I'm seeing. Uh, I look ridiculous, let's be honest. But, all for the sake of the, of, uh, of the YouTubes so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, got to grab my ratchet set so I can get these puppies out. Flathead screwdriver. Hey, flathead screwdriver. Ratchet set. Okay, first things first. I'll pop that open that open and find us something that works although all the ones I need are missing it's probably a it's probably you know it might not be that one I'm trying eight mil I don't remember what it is yeah it's not an eight mil probably the six mil that's missing nope seven mil beautiful Screw that, don't lose it. Yeah, we'll set that up here. See how ridiculous I look? You guys see that? Ridiculous. This one has this little plastic piece that actually snaps in and then comes off as a whole piece like that. Kind of just slips over it so you can pop it off. Uh, I think that one is actually an 8 mil. And then there's a nut on the underside of it that you have to grab too that I think is also... Eight mil, let me check. Yep, I think it is. So we'll leave this here because we're gonna have to use that one again. I'm gonna check this eight mil to make sure that that's gonna work. Hey, there we go. I wonder if I can, oh, all right. Since I've done it so many times, the nut isn't crazy tight. So I, I'm unscrewing it and trying my best not to lose it. Let's see. Got it. Beautiful. And then this just pulls up. Put that on the back so we don't lose it. 
Now the other one I don't actually have installed because I'm, I'm not bolting anything to it. I just wanted this to stay in place. Um, but I do have this other one in my garage. So it's not that I lost it. I do have it. It's just in my garage. So we have this all disconnected. Set our stuff off to the side so we don't lose it. And then this just pulls up like that. And we are going to set this inside with everything else so we don't lose that. We have a couple more uh, nuts that we have to undo right here, which these are just finger tight. So undo that one, undo that one. Well, they're finger tight on my end. I don't know if they would be on yours. And then make sure before you pull this thing off, you have two plugs right here that you need to unplug otherwise you will rip these wires out and that will not be good it will end very poorly if I can get this one undone no oh, there's no one underneath it there we go all right so we still have these so I'm gonna do these so I don't lose them let's put them right back where we got them from And then this you gonna be are you gonna do that to me? There we go. Okay. This whole piece comes out. Just like that. So we're good. So the whole rear of the trunk is out. As you can see, we got it out. So let's climb in, have some fun. Okay. So, since I've already wired everything, these are our subwoofer wires that were connected directly to the subwoofer. These were connected directly to the subwoofer. Don't clip out. See how they got a little thing in there. I don't know if that does anything, so I just didn't clip it out. Um, but when you remove the housing that's back here, which you have to take off this whole panel, it's all clips and other fun stuff. So just be careful you don't break any of the clips. Um, but when you have to take all this out, there's a plastic hardened Carmen uh, subwoofer housing back here that has, I think it was three bolts holding it in like this down here. It had three or four of those holding it in. And then you can take it out. It's got a rubber grommet that these, see, you can see the rubber grommet inside there. I think you can see it, but I just popped the rubber grommet out. I unscrewed the subwoofer and then my subwoofer actually was bad. So I, these are uh, soldered onto the subwoofer. So you do have to clip these wires. If you do want to replace the factory subwoofer, which I do have a factory subwoofer, not a factory, but I have an aftermarket subwoofer that I placed that I had in there anyway. Um, but there's this rubber grommet right here. And then you have your subwoofer wires that I actually will wire up to this, which is our line output converter, JL Audio. This one's actually, I really, really like this one. Uh, I had another one, a different brand that was not great compared to this one. Um, it, you could hear static and all that kind of stuff. This one, I get crystal clear sound with it. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. So what I like about this one is they, they tell you how to get this tuned. So you turn your volume to, I don't, I don't remember if it's like three quarter volume or whatever, and then you have to play a solid 50 Hertz note. Uh, and then you just turn up this output level until this light, this clipping light turns on. And then once that turns on, that's where you leave it. Uh, it was something like that. I can't remember exactly, but uh, yeah. So we have this bad boy ready to go. Uh, yep. And I'm actually, I might take this off and clean up this wiring a little bit because this is pretty sloppy. I'm not going to lie about it. Uh, so yeah, but I did break a few of the clips in here, unfortunately. Um, so don't do that if you guys are going to do this. That's all I'm going to say. But let me see. See, like this one here plastic clip broke this one down here 
plastic clip broke. So just be very careful with that. Make sure you undo the charging port back here so you don't rip that off. And then just be careful when you pull this out. But like this has clips down here too that you gotta get. This piece has to come out, which this clip broke, as you can see. So I broke a few clips I'm trying to get this thing installed, but without any instruction, I mean, I didn't really have a choice, so I couldn't really find anything online on how to do this. So just be careful taking everything apart. Don't break, just, oh, you know what I did? There it is. That's what you gotta do. And now this whole panel is completely off. So you can see it's got a few of these yellow clips here. One here, one here. Some of them here that broke. This one completely broke off. This one just sort of broke off. Uh, but everything else is still intact So and then there's another yellow clip that's down towards the door down there, but we're gonna keep this In the garage keep it safe with everything else. I don't know if I'm running out of room here on the car seats That'll work so grab my toolbox here All right Set that in there. So as you can see, here is the grommet that I was telling you guys about. And the only reason I'm leaving this in is if I do decide to uh, put the factories, yeah, see, bolts, one, two, three, so there's three of them. But if I do decide to put the factory subwoofer housing back in, um, I can just pop the grommet in and we'll be good to go, so.